I hope that you have downloaded this data file from the previous lecture and now let us talk about this data file in detail. In fact, understanding this data is very important for us because it is not just, you know, uh, the data that we are going to use in this course. The data has been organized. This data has been organized in a way that practical databases are, you know, organized. So if you extract your information from any accounting software or ERP or any other software system, you will be getting the data in very similar kind of fashion. So we need to understand that in detail. So the first thing that you should be noticing is that in this Excel file, actually there are four sheets. So this is the first sheet that is here. The second sheet is chart of accounts. The third sheet is territory and the fourth sheet is calendar. So you can see that calendar contains the information of dates and then we have some corresponding information for our own health. So for example, for the dates of 2018, I also have an year column. I also have the quarter column and the month column and the day column. So this additional information is actually to speed up my data analysis. So if I have to see the data yearly, I can simply use this field. If I have to see my data quarterly, I can compare here. And if I have to, you know, check out my data at day level and I want to analyze that which days are performing best in our company, I can directly go and analyze data on this level. So we have split our date into multiple levels for the quick analysis. In the territory table here, you can see we have the country and for each country there is a region as well. So for example, in North America, we are operating in two countries that is USA and Canada. In the Europe, we are operating in three countries and in the Oceania, we are operating in two countries. Now one thing that you will notice is each country has been assigned a territory key. So, you know, this territory key is the key which we will be referring to if we have to enter any, you know, country information, we will simply be referring to territory key. And then with territory key, we will be able to decode from this sheet that which country we are talking about. So, for example, if you will say that if you will see the territory key of five anywhere in your data, you will know that we are talking about France and we are talking about Europe. OK, so now let us talk about chart of accounts. Now, I hope you remember chart of accounts. Chart of accounts is basically a list of all the GL accounts. So, you know, in the GL, we have a separate ledger for all different types of assets and income and expenses and liabilities, right? So all of those accounts are here. But you know what we have done is we have also classified them, you know, with their report and with their type. So for example, we know that cash at bank and cash in hand both belong to cash and cash equivalents. And we also know that cash and cash equivalents is a part of current assets. And then current assets are a part of assets and then assets are a part of balance sheet. So the way we have split our chart of accounts is that we have divided our data into two reports balance sheet and profit and loss. By the way, you will see a third type as well. Here you can see the adjusting one, but that is just, you know, a temporary thing that we are using to, you know, make things easier for us. Towards the end of the course, I will simply, you know, tell you that how we can actually get rid of this adjusting part. But one thing that we need to notice is, you know, we will not be using this adjusting anywhere in our data. So we will be using only PNL and balance sheet. Uh, don't worry about that. You will learn that in detail later on. Now, let me go back again and let me explain you what, what we were talking about. So I was saying we have broadly broken down our data, our chart of accounts into two reports, balance sheet and profit and loss. Now, if we focus balance sheet, you can see that we have further broken down our balance sheet into assets and liabilities and honors equity. These are the two sides of the balance sheet. And then you will notice that within the liabilities and honors equity, we have further split them into liabilities and honors equity separately. Now within the assets, you can see we have current assets and then non-current assets. In the current assets, we have cash and cash equivalents and then receivables and then inventory and then other current assets. And within the receivables, you can see you have four different types of receivables that are trade receivables, other receivables, interest receivables and dividend receivable. So these are the four different type of receivables, but you can further classify them into one type that is receivables. And then all of these are part of current assets. And then all of the current assets and non-current are the part of assets. And then eventually 
all the assets and liabilities and owner's equity are part of balance sheet. Similarly, we have broken down our P&L into trading account and operating account. In the trading account, we have sales, sales return and cost of sales. In the operating account, we have all those operating expenses. You can see that again at multiple steps, we have broken down our information. And then, you know, we have operating account depreciation and amortization part that is non cash part. And then we have non operating and we have interest and tax. So the benefit of this classification is if I simply need to refer my system that please go and calculate current assets, you know, we will have to if I work on this level, I will be able I will have to define all the things that please bring in cash at bank and then cash in hand and then trade receivables and then the receivables and then interest receivable, right? So we will have to classify all of them and telling Power BI that please bring in all of these will be a bit time taking. So rather I can simply go to my, you know, simply go to my Excel and tell them that please, uh, you know, simply go to subclass two and use the current assets and it will automatically bring in all of this information. Similarly, if we want to talk about all the assets, we will say please go to class or subclass and bring in assets and that will bring in all different type of assets that are available there. So these basically these three tables are you know lookup tables. With lookup tables I mean is that these tables provide additional information on something. So you can see that all of these tables have a key. Here we have the account key. So in your transaction whenever you are recording some transaction you will simply be entering the number the code number here right. So for example you have to record a cash in hand you will be using the code 20 and when we see the code 20 we will be you know uh, clear that we are talking about cash in hand which is a part of cash and cash equivalents and then these are part of current assets and then assets and then balance sheet so you know this sheet will be able to uh, will be helping us in the data analysis at different levels now finally let us go to talk about uh, let us go to gl and talk about the data now you know you know that GL basically contains the information of all the transaction. So I will call GL my data table. This contains the data of the business transactions. All other tables that we have, the chart of accounts and the territory and the calendar, those were basically providing me the additional information about the data. So those tables are called lookup tables. Now in the GL, you can see that we have an entry number. This is just basically a entry number telling us that this is a separate entry. So for example, 1.1, 1.2, 2.1, 2.2. .2. So you will see that we have 0.1 and 0.2. That is because, you know, in accounting, each entry has a dual impact, a debit side and a credit side. So we are not seeing debits and credits here. I have converted them to plus and minus. And I will tell you how we have converted that. But a quick note. Please do not say that a debit is a plus and a credit is a minus. That is not how it works. And if it was so easy, we never needed debit and credit anyway, right? So a debit is not a plus or not a minus. It depends. Towards the end, I will tell you how to convert your debits and credits data into plus and minus. But for now, let us focus on this PI file and let us move forward. Okay, so let us take a look at the data. So I was saying that we have the entry number and then we have the date and then this territory key now with this territory key you can check the other table that is available within this excel file or for that matter i can say within this database and now with this territory key you can tell me that which country i am referring to and which region i am referring to similarly if i talk about account key that is 230 here with this account key you can tell me that which account i'm referring to and then what which reports it belongs to and what is its type i mean it is a current or non-current it is an asset or liability or it is you know income or expense so with this account we can extract all the information from the other sheet that is available in chart of accounts so this table will be called data table so this is basically how databases are designed in the main data tables the information is you know provided in a very summarized manner so if i provide all of the, the, that information here in each line that this is you know current asset and then asset and then balance sheet this will actually you know make my database quite heavy
so we have to keep it light and we have to make sure that we are managing it as efficiently as possible so we simply drop in the keys and then whenever we need the extra data extra information we can refer to that separate table and we can extract that data from here so with that i think that we are now you know you should be quite comfortable with this data now one thing that we will need to do is that we need to upload this data into an excel file in front of me you can see that i already have this data in the excel but that doesn't make any difference we will have to you know upload that again using a power query if we need to use power pivot we have to upload that using power query now with the power query data can be coming from any source like even from the database directly and let us uh, connect uh, that let us let me show you that in the next lecture